deep vein thrombosis can be a real life-changing experience for the person that's afflicted. Uh, we have three different layers of veins in the leg. The ones that are on top of muscle, maybe deep to the surface, but on top of muscle can safely be treated. Those that are deep to muscle tend to be bigger. Okay, They are the ones that are the major uh, output of blood from the lower extremity. And when a patient exhibits uh, signs or symptoms of a deep vein thrombosis and are found to have a deep vein thrombosis, they can have a painful swollen leg the rest of their life. Sadly, there's an epidemic of blood clots in our country. You've heard of uh, uh, Daniel Bloom, uh, who, a uh, reporter in Iraq, was playing football, thought he just had uh, leg soreness from playing football, and died of a pulmonary embolus on, on uh, uh, duty over in Iraq as a reporter. Uh, Serena Williams recently had a, a, if I'm not mistaken, a foot surgery and had a pulmonary embolus. So had a deep vein clot develop and develop pulmonary embolus. Uh, I don't know that many would know, but uh, Dan Quayle uh, years ago, and I'm, we're talking Indiana, okay, so Dan Quayle um, also was treated for bronchitis for a number of weeks that didn't get better. He was coughing up blood largely because of a pulmonary embolus that was diagnosed only after the fact. Now, the, the reality is a deep vein thrombosis is something that uh, can be sudden. It can be uh, triggered for people that have either immobility, uh, let's say that they've had a surgery and they're in a cast. If we're not squeezing our calf muscle, we're not getting as much blood flow in our deep system, which puts us at risk for developing a blood clot. Anybody that's had trauma, okay, maybe we haven't had surgery, but we've had a major injury to an area and swelling in an area. That can also affect our venous system and put us at risk of developing a, a clot in the deep venous system. And lastly, some people just have uh, a propensity to form blood clot. They haven't had surgery, they're walking, talking, minding their own business, and all of a sudden the leg gets suddenly painful and swollen. And they, be, they may be one of that one in 20 of, of adult Americans with a clotting disorder. So. When I was in medical school, not much emphasis was put on DVT prevention. I wasn't the only one trained back when I was trained, and so we've got a big education gap. And recent studies have come out saying, of all the patients admitted to the hospital, it's not just the surgical patients that are at risk, it's also the medical patients that are at risk. If you put somebody at bed rest for five days and you don't give them proper protection from developing blood clots, that can be a fatality. Blood clots can be deadly. Blood clots can be uh, subtle in their onset. And uh, I think the, the biggest part of this is, first, if unexplained leg pain and swelling, you need an ultrasound until proven otherwise. Uh, good prophylactic uh, treatment after surgery can help minimize the risk of, of DVT, after total hips and total knees especially. In the hospital now, there's uh, order sets, and it's uh, a cue that tells you basically if you're not going to uh, provide prophylaxis, what would be the reason? So there's a heightened awareness right now of this, but we still have a big, uh, a big uh, path to tread. And uh, it's just real important that, that people recognize their risk for DVT. And whether it's attending a screening event, whether it's going to uh, websites that can assess different risk factors, if you question your risk for uh, developing a blood clot, just realize the first blood clot can be deadly. Once that blood clot develops, if it dislodges, it can go straight up into the right side of the heart, into the lungs, and now all of a sudden, it can be a terminal event. So it's, uh, it's, it's certainly a, a problem and we need to build awareness and it, it is certainly a, a game changer for somebody that's otherwise uh, free of that problem. Once they get a blood clot, it can be, it can be um, a real life changer. Now on the bright side, as much of a problem as we have with uh, blood clots in society, the treatment options are actually getting much better. If a diagnosis is made acutely, in other words, a patient had sudden onset of leg pain and leg swelling, you can get them uh, revascularized through the same clot busting drugs that have been opening up coronary arteries for years. Not only that, there are mechanical devices to help dislodge the clot and help keep it from passing up to the lungs so that we can open up that obstruction. Failure to open up an obstruction increases the pressure in the limb. So the quicker 
those can those uh, vessels can be open, the greater chance of salvaging one-way valves in the leg so that you no longer have backwards flow. There's a condition in untreated DVT called post-thrombotic syndrome. And post-thrombotic syndrome uh, is essentially that painful swollen limb that happens years after uh, a blood clot. And in patients uh, that have an acute thrombus, the management has changed as well. Not only is it uh, something that used to be treated with bed rest, warm compresses, and elevation. Standard of care right now, if you're not opening the vessel up acutely in the, in the interventional uh, suite, you're basically treating patients with uh, low molecular weight heparin or an injectable blood thinner, uh, and then Coumadin, an oral anticoagulant for anywhere from four weeks to six months, depending upon the nature of the thrombus. Uh, but ever more important in preventing complications long term is the application of compression. In fact, protocols nowadays, if you're going to get Lofenox for your deep vein thrombosis, you're getting your compression stocking applied about the same time. So this is a, a disease process that's common. It's a disease process that's undergoing changes and generally speaking, most changes are for the better. I think if we can do a better job of assessing risk and having patients know their individual risk, we can go a long way to help preventing this and help lessening the, the incidence.